Square bottles like this must have been made in vast numbers. They survive by the hundreds. They typically have a large inner folded lip flared outward, and they have a large strap handle. The large Roman storage vessels were not thin, and they could be very large. So making them requires a lot of glass. This is going to be a full two-gather process. I take a substantial initial gather, and then using the wet cherry wood block, I shape it to roughly that of an egg, and blow an initial bubble in the glass. The bubble is left small and very thick-walled, and when the glass is stiff, at about 1100 degrees, I lower the first gather back into the molten glass and overlay it with more glass. This is called a double gather. A larger block is used to again shape the gather to roughly that of an egg. The initial bubble has largely disappeared at this point. The glass is made somewhat cylindrical in shape, and the bubble is blown larger. The tip is marvered, and this is to ensure that the tip where the punty will eventually rest is the thickest part of the vessel. The bubble is blown larger and immediately elongated to form a tube. A little more marvering of the tip ensures that the bottom remains the thickest part of the vessel. About halfway through the process, the bubble will be separated from the blowpipe, this constriction will enable that. The spin both elongates the tube and cools it. The lower half is reheated. The bubble blown larger and a constriction is made that will articulate the vessel body from the neck. During this time, I'm blowing air in with the rubber tube to make the bubble larger. In Roman times, surely an assistant would be blowing at this point. Prior to going in the square mold, I'll get the spherical portion hot. And when the neck is fairly stiff and the bubble is fairly soft, it's lowered into the mold, blown hard, pushed downward, and this creates the square shape. Next, the vessel has to be held from the bottom to enable the rim to be formed. I'll use a punty 
Many, many square bottles have no punty mark. They were held with a clamp. A little water in the crevice and a little tap and the neck breaks cleanly. Next, the opening has to be reheated to a temperature of about 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. When the upper inch or so softens, a conical tool is used to push the rim inward and begin the inner folded lip. The flare is begun and then folded back. At this point the rim is double thickness and that makes it incredibly strong. Romans almost never made handles with a round cross section. They were nearly always flat. And this strap handle will be flat. I've made a gather on a special punty that has a small T at the end, and this helps make the strap shape. This handle has a dent down the middle, The first attachment point is put on the shoulder. The rod is cut free. The second attachment point is made. Pushed upward against the neck, the excess is cast off with a thin thread dragged along the hot, larger mass of glass, and it effectively vaporizes the thread. The vessel is flashed in the furnace and the handle given its final shape. The object is flashed a few times so that the handle and vessel body are the same temperature. It's then placed in the annealing oven and the punty, the metal rod, is tapped gently with the tweezers and this breaks it free. Vessels like this were indeed made in vast numbers, and it takes in real time about six minutes to make one of these objects.